people who are treating animals on uh, street i think they think themselves that they are doctors and whatever they give might help animals but sometimes giving wrong medications will do more harm than good we have seen dogs and cats dying because people have given wrong medicines on the road giving time is a major factor it's not that it, it's not your mate's dog if you're getting a dog okay so a lot of families uh, they come to the clinic then they are like they're asking their mate acha isne khana khaya kya isne suzu kya kya isne potty kya kya they have no clue about it and the dogs are not even very connected to the actual parents who say themselves that they are parent but they are more connected to the mate Please subscribe to our channel Talky Tales and do not forget to press the bell icon so that whenever we upload a video you come to know Super Pets was founded in July 2018. It came up as a small clinic of 200 square feet, which we had started uh, attached to an NGO. So it started with basic practices and surgeries and all that we began with. Hi, I am Dr. Nikita Pujari. I am seeing more of orthopedic and neurological rehabilitation cases of dogs, cats, even birds and small animals and exotics like hamsters, rabbits. even um, parrots we had seen so by the age of i guess 7 or 8 by second standard i decided that i wanted to become a veterinarian when i heard the word for the first time after my 12th standard the dream came true my uh, younger brother dr yash savla uh, it is his vision of super pets so he started super pets in a 200 square feet clinic back in kardanda where we were having quite smaller uh, premises and we have a have very much restricted with all the facilities super pets is into this industry since about 3 uh, to 4 years and we have uh, heard all the problems that pet parents are facing so the most important thing was hospitalization which uh, not most of the clinics are able to provide so all the clinics they run from 10 to 6 pm or 10 to 8 pm so many pet parents were uh, giving us an opinion that we do not have anything if there is some emergency that arises in the night time we had this intention in our mind if if we can get some facilities right in the center of the city to provide uh, hospitalization uh, where the post operative care can be taken care of and also uh, if we can convert this into a 24/7 facilities where people even in the night if they have some emergencies they can come to us we decided to expand our facilities because we wanted to provide world class facilities to all the pets all the animals strays and pets alike purely based on passion when we started this we never knew that we'll come reach this stage the whole motivation basically has been to serve animals treat them with uh, never say die attitude and provide best kind of um, diagnostic equipments which have which are not present over here probably um, not reachable to many pet parents at many uh, clinics or veterinary setups so that is what we want to do we want to bring foreign over here provide best kind of whatever equipments that are required from diagnostic tools like endoscopies to physiotherapy tools like swimming pools and everything with properly trained staff which is lacking i guess in current scenario that was the whole idea we have three surgeons on board also who do endoscopies and all we have uh, doctor dr neha who is the only fish vet in india so she takes care of exotics and aquatic medicine uh, for the first time we also have a fish hospitalization facility which a lot of people have been looking out on Uh, so yes, we do admit fish. We treat them. Once they get better, you can you know take them home. It's just because it's not possible for you to get them you know every day to the clinic. They undergo a lot of stress. Uh, so we have a full-on tank set up for them. For birds as well. Uh, uh, with birds, I would like to say we have got a lot of rescued birds. So for rescued birds, also we have you know good 
uh, places where we keep them. It's more like an aviary, a short aviary. I am Dr. Anuni and I'll explain you about the blood machines we have here. So this is the CBC machine. So it uh, helps in counting all the blood parameters, uh, the number of cells that are there in the body. And this is the centrifugation machine. Before we go for any blood examination to extract of the serum. Uh, and then the next one is the biochemistry machine. This is used for basically uh, knowing about how the health of the organs of the body. Like this is used for uh, blood examination and uh, this is used for knowing the parameters of liver, kidney function test and all the electrolytes. So this is our IPD. Here we have some jo animals who are keeping the patient. Hai. Hospitalization के लिए साथ में boarding कर रहता है। So ये चारों animals हैं जो कि old नहीं हैं, stray dogs हैं। और इनको tick fever है, paralyzed हैं। ये brownie ये brownie कल रात में आई थी साढ़े बारह बजे। और ये old नहीं हैं, इसको tick fever हमने diagnose किया है। और ये continuously इसका treatment चलता है। ये mystery है, ये boarding में आई है। ये हमारा new patient है। और ये है हमारा शैतान, doggy. We always have float ports along with the dogs and there is an expert swimmer. Uh, we use these float ports in case uh, they have some panic attacks in the swimming pool. This uh, dog swimming pool is one of the biggest swimming pool in Mumbai. There is an ozonation facility that goes inside the water all the time, 24-7. There are big sand filters that are attached to the water. So water is completely clean and healthy for dogs. Cases who had uh, mobility issues, many geriatric patients who were going weak on their limbs, and uh, many accident cases wherein the answer would be let them be just like that, they will get cured if they want to, or euthanize them. And that was not something that I was in favor of. As doctors, we know that there are many things that can be done. Even in humans, there are so many options, and why not in animals? And we all know physical therapy somewhere, somewhere down the line does really help. In India there is no course so I had to go abroad learn more on this front and I came back and I'm using this thing and it's wonderful the cases that we have seen, the progress that we have seen which I don't think medicines could ever achieve. Of course I'm not undermining medicines uh, usage. It was helping but alternative therapy is something that's very much ignored and I don't think uh, that should be the case because it can go a long way. So that is what we want to provide, whatever is the best case scenario, whatever uh, can be the treatment option for their best, that is what we want to give, without thinking that, oh, this is not available in India, properly. Uh, firstly, lack of compliance, fail to either give the medication properly, if you fail twice a day, they probably miss a dose, give it once a day, if they fail to come for follow-ups, or oh, sometimes don't understand the gravity of the situation, in case they're talking about a serious disease, they don't get it, but of course not to blame, because only medicals would understand to that extent. Mm -hmm. uh, convincing them about routine procedures like neutering because some people are of the opinion that it's not good for their health then other people tend to google and they're like no this is what we read or this is what you're saying so then it becomes difficult to convince them in that way. Some readers give them wrong advice which is not medically sound so in such cases it becomes difficult to deal with them. Many pet parents come to us only at the very end stage when the problem is extremely chronic or it's you know long past its actual uh, corrective stage. So that is when they come to us and then they expect that the recovery should be very fast. Something that has taken 10 years to deteriorate can't be recovered in 10 days. So patience is the most important thing that's required. And also to catch the problem in early stage, notice that small abnormalities, a simple thing as shivering can be a reason of pain. Is something that you know small small things uh, sometimes just jumping uh, randomly and limping that can go a long way to cause arthritis so one such case uh, which is very close to my heart is our own rescue uh, she uh, we kept her name Dolly so she, I found her just near highway she was just lying down comatose completely cold I thought she was dead I was just going to pick her up and keep her on the side but then I realized that a little bit heartbeat is still there so I went to the nearest vet clinic we did first aid over there but 
later on we realized that she was completely paralyzed. And that time uh, we started with her basic things, um, lasers, electrical stimulations, uh, acupuncture and everything. And slowly, steadily the recovery that we saw in her, in like, it took time, it took 3-4 months, but the recovery that she made, she made, she was able to run, jump and do everything and seeing that, see, just thinking that on first day probably she would have just died and now she's running, jumping, uh, playing with our other cats, that's a complete joy in itself. Yeah, it is, it is a very happy story about uh, Dobby which you can, uh, uh, n number of uh, patients that we have treated on the streets, uh, like a success story about. We have got a case where we have, you know, turtle with a hook line in, inside. So, because uh, Dr. Yash is an endoscopist, so, and we have an endoscope facility, we managed to use the endoscope and remove the hook. And then these animals are again released back from where you know they were found, the area that they were caught. My mentor was Dr. Dave, who has a clinic in Borivali. He has always taught me that. Uh, चाहे भूकंप आ जाए, आंधी आ जाए, फ्लड्स हो जाए, कुछ भी हो जाए, the clinic should never stop working. We will always be open for everyone because we need to serve. So that is where it comes from. That we were always open even from the day of Janta curfew. We were working for rather extended hours since other clinics were shut. Even the clinic, the hospital, the only hospital, the government hospital in Mumbai, the Parel S P C, even they were shut. Even they used to not take cases. And uh, obviously we did announce everywhere that you know we are open and we are taking in any kind of cases because we wanted to serve everyone. So we had patients coming in from Vasai, Virar, Mulund, Thane, from uh, South, Bombay, 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 South Bombay, Navi Mumbai. Yeah. So it was a very uh, diverse variety of people that we were seeing and all in distress because they couldn't find any vet near them. We started staying by, we used to stay back for like three days and then go back home one day and then come back again and stay again for three days. There were a lot of rumours, misinformation from the media stating that you know even animals spread coronavirus to the humans but dogs and cats they both have their own specific coronavirus which is not transmitted to humans or from human to them. Rather each and every mammal in the animal kingdom they have their very own specific coronavirus causing specific disease in them, not pathogenic to humans at all. Many breeds nowadays have a lot of genetic issues, uh, majorly Labrador, Golden Retrievers, GSD, um, Shih Tzu's or even uh, Huskies, they have major genetic issues. Uh, which you can see at very early age, like six months or so, they have hip dysplasias, arthritis developing at uh, as good as one or two years of age. Even um, patellar luxations is very common in small breed dogs. So all these are genetic things that's coming up, and all this is because of inbreeding, because people wanting foreign breed over Indian breed. So that is why the breeding process to fasten it up, and especially during lockdown, we are seeing all these cases. Um, becoming more and more to go for Indian breeds rather than these foreign breeds. Uh, firstly, they're on the streets, so giving them a home is a very noble thing to do. Why would you go and purchase someone from the shop or the breeder, right? You're just contributing to more breeding and wrong practices. Secondly, these Indian breeds are really suited to our environmental conditions. So they're really resistant, they're really hardy. Uh, no matter what you feed them, they don't have these so-called allergies which other exotic breeds have and uh, they don't fall sick that often. They're very, very, uh, you know, resistant to everything. So even maintaining them is very easy. Your uh, cost of raising them would be much lesser. They are very intelligent, uh, very friendly. So that also really helps. So, you know, it's, it's always good that you let the dog be a dog and not humanize them <laughs> in terms of diet because a lot of people who tend to, you know, feed from their plate and they said that they love their dog a lot but that is not good you are rather you know it's like a slow poison it's giving like wrong food trouble. it's like inviting trouble long term metabolic disease and all so you know that's not good a lot of people also get turtles and tortoises in the home you know because of the feng shui and good luck 
uh, but for me it's like you know uh, we have had lot of clients who are vegetarian and get turtles then they shift them to a vegetarian diet uh, so i feel that is not what should be done people who are treating animals on uh, street i think they think themselves that they are doctors and whatever they give might help animals but sometimes giving wrong medications will do more harm than good so you know it's always better that you know whoever is family vet types yeah. you can always ask them ki you know this is the problem you not able to catch the animal what medicine can you give or if we are giving this is it correct or not correct because you do not know the age of the animal you do not know if the animal has a concurrent disease condition and when you end up giving some medicine it will do more harm we have seen dogs and cats dying because people have given wrong medicines on the road even if you get a child into your life into your family you need a certain amount of preparedness and you should know what to do what not to do just the basics and then you learn with time i think bringing an animal in your life is the same bringing a pet is very much the same in fact i feel it's like a child that never grows up so you should definitely know the basics the do's and don'ts how to bring them up what to do what not to do what to expect what not to expect in a lot of families where only one person has decided to get a dog and then he needs to take care of it for life and when it comes to old age with a dog is not able to walk and all we have seen that that's the only person who struggling in other family who is not really care about it so it's a big decision it should be taken responsibly giving time is a major factor it's not that it, it's not your mate's dog if you're getting a dog okay so a lot of families uh, they come to the clinic then they are like they are asking their maid acha isne khana khaya kya isne suzu kya kya isne potty kya kya they have no clue about it and the dogs are not even very connected to the actual parents who say themselves that they are parent but they are more connected to the maid so much more can be done uh, for animals compared to how much more is done for humans how much care is taken for humans so then kind of to see that and kind of to match up with that to whatever extent we can of course we still far away but to kind of give them the best kind of love treat them empathetically is what uh, really pushed me to i mean i really saw a big scope there so i was like yeah let's get in there and do something for that when we feel that you know someone is genuinely unable to pay but they want to do something for the for their pet or strays we are very open to that fact ki you know it's our duty to help everyone it's not just business it is out of humanity and you know we are doctors thoda bahut agar hum free mein kar bhi lete hain to they doesn't harm us really and that is why we started super pets in the first place a lot of people also feel that you know clinics are all about money and business and what do we do outside the box but i would like to tell them there's so much that we still do outside the box because uh, you know when we do endoscopy when we do amputations when we do surgeries we do not do any you know private collection of funds or anything is just through the you know the love and the passion that we have for these animals and as a contribution towards our uh, wildlife we do all of it so i would just like to tell that you know if you have any wildlife that you come across and you need help you can always reach out to us we always struggle and look for good vets who can do justice to the practice and that is how we want to grow so if i want to add up additional services which i want to that is why you know we are hiring good vets we are training them i want people to take my place and make justice to it so yeah future plan is to give more services better services what services only that we can think of that we see in videos and all that people do in foreign countries where we want to start doing now I would like to thank each and every one of you all for subscribing our channel for liking and for commenting and for all your suggestions that you all have given us. We really really appreciate all your active participation for Talkie Tales. Thank you.